Watch out. The Corthal's Griffin is on the prowl. And he couldn't be happier. This is a very, very good hunting dog. It's a great water dog. If it sees the lake, usually it'll jump right into it. Retrievers in the water and pointers in the field. These versatile sporting dogs are called wire-haired pointing griffins. Others call them griffons. Either way, they're extremely rare. Think about it. In 2007, the American Kennel Club registered 39,000 litters of Labrador puppies, but only 92 litters of griffin puppies. They're not a super popular breed, and it's probably because they aren't very well adapted for things like city and apartment life and for small suburbs. It's no wonder. Nicknamed the Supreme Gun Dog, the Corthal's Griffin is tailor-made to hunt birds and other furry creatures. They are amazingly intelligent, very fast, very agile, and so really great for the sort of person who's going to go out and do a lot of sports and outdoor activities. Royalty and celebrities have had a fondness for them. Grace Kelly's husband, Prince Renier of Monaco, owned a griffin. And so did hey. the Fonz, Henry Winkler. But the man who admired the most was their creator, Dutch sportsman E.K. Corthals. It was in the Netherlands in the late 1800s that Corthals began a breeding experiment. Word has it that he crossed a German griffin with a French pointer and later added spaniels, setters, and retrievers into the mix with one thing in mind, to develop the ultimate walking hunter's gun dog. Corthal's got his wish. The breed's rough and wiry double coat provides excellent protection in any environment, but it also creates a disheveled appearance. Griffs, as they're often called, are known for their bushy eyebrows and prominent mustache. Which actually gives them a really cute expression in their face. They almost look like a Muppet. Their noses come in just one color, brown with well-opened nostrils that enhance their powerful sense of smell. Padded paws and webbed toes ensure that this highly athletic canine is as comfortable darting into the woods as into the water. Paint the heel. This Corthal's Griffin may look like a typical house dog heading out for a walk, Up. but she Get has another girl. side to her. Get back. That's good. And her owner takes full advantage of it. Kurt Merg is a wildlife biologist on a mission and five-year-old Pinta is helping him fulfill it. My goal as a private lands biologist is to ensure that we have wildlife habitat, especially in those areas that are not profitable to farm. Kurt and Pinta work on the Palouse Prairie, a grassland region in eastern Washington state where wheat farms dominate the landscape. Less than 1% of the prairie remains, but with Pinta's help, Kurt's encouraging farmers to set aside small portions of land for wildlife development. Pinta helps me in my job. She is an extension of my senses, I suppose. Take this retrieving dummy here, connect it to this string, and you're going to pull it through the wheat stubble until you get into the brush line over there. To pique the farmer's interest in his dog, Kurt shows off Pinta's amazing tracking ability in a hunt test called Retrieve by Drag. Kurt rubs a dummy with his scent and then passes it on to the farmer's son, Luke, who drags it through a field and hides it, all while Kurt blocks Pinta's view. Then it's testing time. Let's go find it. Track, track. Without fail, Pinta's nose leads her along the exact same trail as the dummy toward her prey. Good girl, good. To me, it's a miracle. I couldn't possibly do it myself, and so watching her do it just makes me grin. It was cool that she could just go down there and just find it, then bring it back without even looking around. When Pinta's in the field, she's doing what a Corthal's Griffin is bred to do, hunting. But Kurt uses her skills simply to identify where wildlife lives. Then he tells farmers about conservation programs to expand wildlife habitat. We're just got to find the birds. Yeah. They seem kind of sparse today. She's uh, trying. While Kurt and farmer Tim roam this 1,500-acre farm, Pinta gets to work. Like all griffs, she relies on air currents and her highly sensitive nose, which has 25 times more smell receptors than a human's, to track wildlife. When she's aimless, it's clear no animals are present, and the search continues. When her tail wags furiously, Kurt knows she's onto something. And when she freezes, he knows she's found it. Then Kurt steps in to see what Pinta's turned up. This time, it was a pheasant. 
If I didn't have Pinta in the field, I wouldn't be anywhere near as effective at finding birds, and I wouldn't get a chance to share the fact that there are birds there with the farmers. Well, it looks like real likely habitat up here. I think we ought to give it a shot. Farmer Tim already practices conservation farming, but when Kurt and Pinta pay him a visit, he knows his efforts are paying off. I know a lot of where the wildlife kind of likes to hang out, but a lot of times we will not see them without bringing Pinta out here because she will go in and point them out. Otherwise, we would just walk right by them. Good girl. There's no question that the wire-haired pointing griffin is Kurt's favorite breed. His family has had only griffs since Kurt was a kid. I do remember the first griff that our family ever had. It's, um, <laughs> we named it Ugly. What I like about wire-haired pointing griffins is they're working dogs, and that drive, that singleness of purpose, that charms me. Naturally, when Kurt had the chance to get a dog of his own, he knew he had to have a griff. Pinta is a great companion. We really have a special bond, and that's really precious to me. As precious as wildlife conservation. Without his friend with four legs, Kurt couldn't do his job as successfully. There it goes. At the end of the day, Kurt reflects on the future of the prairie. He knows that his work with Pinta may be helping to preserve increasingly rare species. She's on them now. This Corthal's griffin shines a spotlight on the importance of preserving the landscape, so all creatures have a place to call home. The Corthal's griffin has been called the best kept secret in the sporting group. So don't fool yourself into thinking that these outdoor enthusiasts will be satisfied with leisurely strolls. Walking them is not enough if you're talking about I'm gonna go around the block once and bring them into the house. What you gotta do is you gotta exercise them. Country life or a large house with an ample yard will make these active animals happiest. Their health issues are similar to other sporting breeds. Bloat, hip dysplasia, and degenerative disc disease. But when it comes to grooming, you're in luck. A simple brushing a few times a week will do it. Their coat is remarkably weather and water resistant. And so this is the sort of dog where they come out of the water, they give it a good shake, and for the most part, they're fine. They're highly trainable, too, thanks to their quick minds and easygoing nature. But they're not just hunting heroes. They're also great family companions, fiercely loyal and affectionate with children. Griffs get along well with other pets, too. The Corthal's Griffin is a fantastic dog for outdoorsy types. They require a lot of exercise and thrive in open spaces. They suffer from health problems like bloat and hip dysplasia, but they're easy to groom, a pleasure to train, and make very good family pets. Just keep their minds working and their bodies moving, and the Corthal's Griffin will keep you smiling, whether you're kicking back or ramping up. More ahead on Dogs 101, the breed that dries himself off with one shake and the breed that survived the sinking of the Titanic. Now it's time to play Pick the Pooch. This long-haired, agile dog herds runaway sheep by riding their backs like a bronco buster. Can you guess which breed it is? The answer when we come back. This breed hops on top of the sheep he's herding and rides the runaway to exhaustion. It's the Puli. The shaggy breed has been a vital part of the lives of Hungarian shepherds for more than a thousand years. 